So this one is not in anything close to standard form, and that's okay, uh, because we know we can complete the square for both the x and the y, by the way, so that we can have some quantity squared for x and y, which would then change this equation into standard form. All right, first thing we need to do on this equation is to rearrange all of the terms that are kind of like each other. I mean, we're not looking for exact like terms, but see how we've got this x squared here and this is a 6x. I need those closer together so that I can really focus on this completing the square stuff. Now, some of you guys may choose to skip this step. I wouldn't recommend it just because it can throw you off a little bit, all right? But it's your life, all right? So I've got an x squared. I'm gonna move the 6x over there. And then I've got also a positive y squared minus a 4y. And all this garbage is going to equal this 3 here. Now, I did give myself some space in there on purpose, okay? And that is for me to complete the square. So for the x's, I'm going to need to add, remember, it's the square of a half. Half of what? Well, it's that b value, which for the x x is a 6. Okay. Now I can evaluate this. This would be the same as 3 squared, which is going to be 9. The reason I'm doing this is because, remember, if I do it to one side of the equal sign, I've got to do it to the other side. And just to save myself some work, I now know that I'm just adding 9 to the other side of that equation. All right, let's try the next one, and this is for the y's, right? And yes, I'm not finished complete. I'm not complete. I haven't factored out the x's there yet so that we have a squared quantity. That's because I want to focus on the y's. So let's get in. We're going to add. Again, it's half of a square. And again, if we do it to one side of the equal sign, we've got to do it to the other side, but we can evaluate this. This one would be negative 4. So this ends up being a negative 2 squared, which means that we really added 4. So I'm going to add it to the other side of the equal sign also. So I evaluated this, right? 3 plus 9 plus 4 is 16. And again, it's just going to equal 16 in the end. But now we can go in and look at each of these separately, our x's and our y's, and separate these because... We did use completing the square on these. It really is just that we're going to make a perfect square out of these. So I've got x, and this would end up being plus the value that was inside the parentheses there. You guys remember that from completing the square, hopefully. And then we're going to add this to, it's going to be y, and we're going to square that. And the value inside the parentheses is what's going to, go with our y, so that'd be y minus 2. And of course this equals 16. Well this is great because now this is in standard form and we have an h value of, sorry that'd be a negative 3, right? Because it was plus 3 which means it's really like an x minus a negative 3 squared. Ooh, there we go. So that's our h value. The k value is shown right here because it would be y minus k. So that's just going to be a positive 2 for our center. And to find the radius, we just need to square root the 16, which would mean it would be the same as 4 squared. So we have a radius now, a radius of 4. So since this is our standard form, up here, this was x plus 3. But what we want to see is x minus something. Whatever we're subtracting is the value of, in this case, h. So what I did is I changed it right here to be x minus negative 3. And that's why this h is a negative 3. Same with the k. But the k was already being subtracted. Right? It was y minus 2. So the k here is considered a positive 2, which we put into the ordered pair there. Essentially what this is saying is that whatever this 
value is, like this one would be, con this term would be considered a plus three or a positive three. We're going to take the opposite of it. This one was a negative two, and we took the opposite of it, which would be a positive two. All right, from here, I'm just going to box in my my center ordered pair and then the radius, just so we can graph this thing. All right, so let's put the center in here, which is at negative 3, 2. So negative 3, 2. I got this point, or approximately. It's kind of hard to do this on a electronic device. And we already know that the radius is 4. All right, so the radius <laughs> means that we have points 4 units away from the center there. So from the center, I can go four units to the left, one, two, three, four. So it should go through this point here. I can go four units up, one, two, three, four. And of course, the order of these doesn't really matter which one you do them, up, down, left, right, whatever. Some kind of John Madden thing, I think, in there. And then we got this point four units away, four units to the right, one, two, three, and four. There we go. So our circle should go through these points.